Ezekiel chapter number 11. Moreover, the Spirit lifted me up and brought me into the east gate of the Lord's house, which looketh eastward. And behold, at the door of the gate five and twenty, and you've seen these guys before, twenty men, among whom I saw Jehazaniah, the son of Asher, and Pethaziah, the son of Benaiah, princes of the people. So they're at the east gate again. Then said he unto me, Son of man, these are the men that despise mischief and give wicked counsel in this city. God points out the evildoers. Paul points out and name. Ezekiel mentions one by name. You got to tell the people. But see, in America, you can't do that. We're so law attorney, lawyers, 1-800-LAWYERS.COM. You'll get a lawyer after anybody to sue anybody for anything. You can't mention their names and have a radio broadcast. You can't mention the people by name and have a TV program. The, the, the advertisers will cut you off. Who cares? I don't see one advertisement in the Bible, yet it's too sold. And people who are against God are named. I wonder what the perverted modern Bible says. You know, don't get your paycheck from the advertisers. Get your paycheck from God. God mentions by name. And yet, you know what? You, you're you bound and chained in free America with a constitution that we have a right to free speech, but we can't say what we, what we need to say. Something's wrong, with, something's wrong with free speech when you can't say what you want to say free. In order to get your... Your IRS uh, gift of the government, you can't say who to vote for. Why not? You know? God says who. God mentions his name. Then said he unto me, Son of man, these are the men that devise mischief and give wicked counsel in this city. Isn't that a great thing? I know we read the verse again. How would you like to be named by God? Ooh. Yeah, you see that guy over there? He's a fool. You see that guy over there? He turns people away from me. You see that guy over there? He perverted my word. Would you like God to say that about you? And yet it's recorded. Jesus said, my word shall never, they're not ever going to go away. They're forever going to stand. Ezekiel 11, 1 and 2 is going to be recorded for all eternity. While these men burn in hell, burn in the lake of fire, it is here in the Bible, and it's not ever going to go away. Do you think about that? Which say, it is not near. Let us build houses. The city is in the city is the cauldron, and we be the flesh. Ezekiel and Jeremiah, you're full of it. The Babylonians are not going to come. And if they do come, we're going to kick some butt. We're going to win. Because we're the men of God. We're the nation. We're of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. John the Baptist said, don't say you're of, of Abraham. These stones right here, they're able to raise up and speak in God. Jesus said, yeah, I know you're of Abraham, but you seek to kill me. See, the nation's resting on pride of who they are. Like America. We were a Christian. We are a Christian. No, you were a Christian nation. And they're saying, you know what? Ezekiel and Jeremiah and God. Is, isn't Ezekiel and Jeremiah speaking by God? So they're telling God he's a liar. Didn't Peter say, oh, Lord, I'll go to prison for you. Yeah, Peter, you're going to deny me three times before that cock. Oh, not me, Lord. Calling God a liar. Because he did believe Jesus was God, right? He did. But, I, Jesus, I, no, you don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, that's what it is. Therefore, I prophesied against, see, you know what the difference between Peter and these men? Peter loved the Lord. And have given the opportunity, you know, he would have gone to prison. 
Given the opportunity, I believe that Peter would have taken Jesus cross. Given the opportunity. I believe he would have. But that cross wasn't for Peter. You know, they said that Peter was crucified upside down, so he wouldn't be an imitation of the Lord. Therefore prophesy against them. Prophesy, old son of man. Tell them what is going to happen about them. And make the prophecy against them. And the Spirit, capital S, of the Lord fell upon me. And said unto me, Speak. Thus saith the Lord. Thus have ye said, O house of Israel. For I know the things that come into your mind. Every one of them. I've had this happen to me many times when I preach and talk. You open your mouth and the Holy Spirit just takes over. I've had times where I open up my mouth and the flesh took over. And it's a wonderful thing to have the Holy Spirit use your mouth and walk away from it like, wow, that was not me at all. That is not what I planned. So Jer Ezekiel opens his mouth and God fills it. And it was not of Ezekiel it was of God this is inspiration here it was written by man and the spirit fell upon me and said unto me speak and thus saith the Lord he spoke and it was written down you have multiplied your slain in this city wait a minute the Babylonians are not, I'm not going to come and destroy the city but we're killing our own people Doesn't that sound kind of weird to you? Don't worry about the Babylonians. We'll kill our own selves and we'll be the only ones on top. How do you know that? What did they do with the Jew of the Jews? The king of the Jews. Did they slay him? So they're filling the city with dead bodies. He had filled the streets thereof with the slain. The Jews are killing the Jews. And the commandment of God is, Thou shalt not kill. How simple can you get? Therefore thus saith the Lord God, Your slain whom ye have laid in the midst of, the, of it, the city, they are the flesh, and the city is the cauldron. But I will bring you forth out of the midst of it. I'm going to take you out of the city. You're not going to die in your homeland. It would be an honor for a, these false prophets, for these prince, you know, the prince that's under the king, these, these 24, be honored to die in Jerusalem. I, I would imagine it would have been for a Jew. I bet you many, the three times a year they are to come to Jerusalem for God. Wouldn't it be great if, if I died at the Feast of Passover in Jerusalem? These men are not going to die in Jerusalem. Ye have feared the sword. So there's no sword. That's what psychology is. There is no fear. We have the freedom of fear. And I will bring a sword upon you, saith the Lord God. You know, when you're in rebellion against God, what you fear God will bring to you? Even sometimes maybe for a Christian. Just to prove that God can get victory in your life. Some of your fears God may bring just to see how you do, how well you would rely on Him. But these people who are against God, oh, we fear the Babylonian army, is what God is saying. The sword, the army, the... The military war. Maybe it's any war. Maybe it's any military. But they feared the sword. And God says, you know what? I'm going to bring it right back in you. And in Timothy, 2 Timothy says that God has not given us the spirit of fear. Here they have a spirit of fear. And there is a fear. I mean, there is a spirit of fear. And God says, you know what? I'm going to feed it, and I'm going to turn your fear into reality. I will bring you out of the midst thereof, the city, and deliver you into the hands of strangers, Gentiles. 
and will execute judgment among you. The mean, nasty dogs, Jonah, Peter, are going to touch you, and they're going to judge you, and they're going to kill you for you slaying your own people. You shall fall by the sword. I will judge you in the border of Israel, not in Jerusalem, in the borders, right in the borders, outside. And you shall know that I am the Lord. The city shall not be your cauldron. And a cauldron is a brass, large kettle or broil. Neither shall ye be the flesh in the midst thereof. But I will judge you in the border of Israel. I'm going to pull you out of the pot and throw you into the fire. And ye shall know that I am the Lord, for ye have not walked in my statutes. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt help your brethren. Thou shalt love your brethren. You need to execute my judgment, but ye have done after the manners of the heathen. You, they are that are round about you. They're serving the heathen gods. They're doing the heathen ways. And it came to pass when I prophesied. And when I did this, Pelathiah the son of Benaiah died. How's that for a for a message? Gets up to the pulpit, preaches a message, and the guy drops dead. Peter did that with uh, that husband and wife couple that lied about the Holy Spirit and the money. Right there in the church, both of them dropped dead. Then fell down on my face and cried with a loud voice, say, Ah, oh, Lord God! Will thou make a full end in the remnant of Israel? And it's not really the remnant of Israel yet. Because Israel is going to be sacked at least one, one more time, not two. Three times total, Ezekiel is probably taken maybe the first time. There's going to be a lot more Jews that are going to be killed. A very few in remnant is going to be left. And the word, and remember, Ezekiel is preaching in Babylon. Jeremiah is preaching in Jerusalem. Again, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, <clears throat> Son of man, thy brethren, even thy brethren, the Jews, the men of thy kindred, the Jews, maybe his own family, and all the house of Israel. So this may be even his family, like Jeremiah's family was against him, and his town folks were against him. Are they unto whom the inhabitants of Jerusalem have said, Get you far from the Lord. Unto us is the land given in possession. Get out of here. This is our land. This is our land. <laughs> we don't want to hear it. That's what they're saying. We don't want you prophesying that God's going to take the land. We want to prophesy we're going to get the land. And we're going to go back there. Because that's where all our church services are. On every street. Every idol. Therefore say, thus saith the Lord God, although I have cast them far off among the heathen, and although I have scattered them among the countries, yet will to them a little sanctuary in the countries where they shall come. So God's going to provide relief for some Jews. He's not going to totally wipe them off the map. We know at least Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, Indigo, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Mordecai. We know at least those Jews survived. And we're given counts in Nehemiah and Ezra of how many Jews have survived. I think even Esther may have men mentioned some numbers. Therefore say, thus saith the Lord God, I will even gather you from the people and send you out of the countries where ye have been scattered, and I will give you the land of Israel. Esther, I mean, yeah, Ezra, Nehemiah. And then the second advent of the Lord Jesus Christ. They shall come thither, and they shall take away all the detestable things thereof, and all the abominations thereof from then. When Ezra and Nehemiah comes, that stuff is all burnt up. It's all been taken to Babylon. It's all been looted. If there were museums back then, they're, they're sitting in museums. Imagine a god of, of, of the uh, Egyptians sitting in a glass case somewhere. <laughs> Imagine a god, a, a pharaoh, king god of all the nations that's been stolen by a robber. Hey, let me go, let me go. I'll, I'll do nothing to you as a god. 
Imagine all these gods that they served in Jerusalem. Hey, don't set me on fire. I'll do nothing to you. Please, don't set me on fire. No, 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 don't do nothing. Don't burn me. No, no, no. And God, the God, came down and destroyed his entire city and the place of the sanctuary because of all the stupid little gods that couldn't protect the city. Who had more power? It was a battle of the gods over God. They said it was in every street. It was in his temple. God says, okay, fine, I'll teach you Jews something. You gather all your gods together, and I'll have a little fire contest like Ezekiel, I mean, uh, Elijah had on Mount Carmel. Let's see what gods are like. And by the third time the Babylonians come and leave Jerusalem, the gods are toast. So God won. And God's people still survive by a small remnant. Therefore say, thus saith the Lord God, I will even gather you from the people and assemble you out of the countries where you have been scattered. I will give you the land of Israel. Preach that message to the United Nuts of them in New York City. Be so bold to go to an Arabian country and preach that message. You'll be absent from the body and present with the Lord. Go to Jordan and preach that message. Go to any of the, of the children of uh, uh, Ishmael and preach that message. I have been told by a missionary who say, when you go to the Middle East, I forget which country it was, in the Middle East, on their maps in the public school rooms, there is no Israel marked on the map. And to my this knowledge, and I didn't ask them what they say it's called. Those people over in the Middle East do not acknowledge Israel, even on their maps. And God says, I will give you the land of Israel. So if you go on the internet and type up the land of Israel and do an image search, guess what you're going to get? You're going to get something that the Arabians don't believe. You're going to get something the United Nets don't believe. You're going to get something that the Catholics don't believe. You're going to get what the children of Ishmael don't believe. You know what I believe? I believe there's a land that's called Israel. It's God's land. And it's, I believe it, it, it's the center of the earth. It may be the center of the universe, maybe, at least Jerusalem, if not God's throne. All your newspaper headlines go from big major stories, and they always go back to Jerusalem. You know one of the places that the media has their team of reporters and cameramen or whatever they need? You know where they have people stationed 365 days, if not 365, 66 days? They got the media camped out in Jerusalem. Imagine the media telling you, oh, there's no Jesus, there's no God. Camping out in his city, in his land. We just change the name to protect and get rid of God. And they shall come thither, and they shall take away all the detestable things thereof, and all the abominations thereof from thence. You know when the second advent, Lord Jesus Christ comes, and we come back on horseback? When we come back to, you know, there'll be no images, idols, statues, icons, aids to worship. That's how clean the land's going to be. The only idol worship image in there of is going to be the Lord Jesus Christ. If somebody tries, you know, the horse that Jesus comes, comes on. If somebody in the millennium tries to make an image to that horse or a statue to that horse, they're going to be thrown in the lake of fire. You do know that the Bible preaches, one of the prophets says, that if you preach Jesus Christ in the millennium, you're going to be cast because you don't need to preach Jesus Christ. He's there. You say, there's nobody like that. At the end of the millennium, Satan gathers up an army. There will be people brought before Jesus Christ as they will be judged by Jesus Christ and thrown into the lake of fire. It's there, down in, in uh, the Dead Sea area. We're going to be coming to it. You want to talk about Holy Land? That ain't the Holy Land now. Wait till Jesus sets his foot on it. Then it'll be holy. It'll be a, the only mountain hill in the world. I will give them one heart. Unity. Not brain. Heart to serve Jehovah God. 
a heart to serve the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ. And I will put a new spirit within you, new life. Pure, clean spirit. And I will take the stony heart out of your flesh. That's what's making them hard-hearted. That's what's making them stiff. That's what Jesus said, out of the heart comes adulteries, idolatry, and, you know, all the sins. You know it's mentioned. The heart is a wicked above all things, Jeremiah said. And God, what's wrong with the nation of Israel today? What is the main problem? It's a heart condition. And God says, I'll take that heart out of you. And we'll give them a heart of flesh. I will give, give them a heart of flesh. So, oh boy, I hate when I think something and it just flies out my ears into somewhere. You talk about these heart transplants. Here's the greatest, holiest heart transplant yet to happen. And this is not going to happen during Ezra and Nehemiah. Because they're going to sin. That temple that Ezra and Nehemiah builds and is redone by Herod. Jesus Christ walks in that place and starts kicking tables over. He starts whipping the animals out of there. Does that sound like they're doing right? Does that sound like they're one heart? One minute. Oh Lord Jesus, heal me. Oh Lord Jesus, I'm blind. I can't see. Oh Hosanna, the grace to the God of honor and God. And crucify him. That doesn't sound like unity. Within a week, they're, they're crying, Hosanna, and then a week later, a couple days, if not, crucify him. What happened to Hosanna? Why didn't anybody go to Jesus and cross? Oh, Jesus, I want to thank you for my eyes being seen. Where are all those people? Where's the guy who's clean with leprosy? With this new heart they're going to get, don't you believe they'll be going to Jesus in Jerusalem, Sitting upon the ark of the mercy seat, where he is arraigned, David's throne, and we go, Oh Lord Jesus, thank you, Messiah. Thank you for what you've done for us. We have been so wrong. And that will please God. That they may walk in my statutes, the law. The law is gone for us right now. Except for, you know, it's, it'll be proper to follow the law, it'll be obedient to follow the law, it'll give you a good testimony to follow the law. But the law is coming back in the tribulation period. The law is coming back in the millennium. And somehow, I believe, maybe the law will be in eternity for those Jews. And keep my ordinances and to do them. We're going to read later on Ezekiel. We're going to read the temple that will be before the Lord Jesus Christ in his holiness. And not the first advent, the second advent. Not the temple that he was brought to be circumcised. Not the temple he was brought to be named. Not the temple that he was left behind when his parents went back home, on the way home. But the holy temple. And they shall be my people. They are his people, but they'll be his people unity of one heart. His people of a new spirit. Of his people a new way. And in obedience. And I will be their God. See, people hate that. You mean, that's not America there? That's not the Germans? I wish I could do the British accent, but that's not England? You mean, that's not, the, that's not us, the Chinese? What's that little nation over there? Well, we're Ishmael. We're of Abraham. No, you're not. You're of Abraham. When you say if you're of Abraham, you're a liar. As I'm doing my report on, on the people of the Bible, I'm talking about we're, we're in Abraham. And we're in Abram. He's not yet Abraham. But long after Ishmael. And I know these messages are getting out. To Iraq and Afghanistan. I can see. And they may be using it to go against me, but I'm going to preach the truth. Allah is not God. Muhammad is not a prophet. The Lord Jesus Christ is God's Savior. Jehovah of the Jews is the God. And that land belongs to Israel. And I better bless them. Because if I don't bless them, I will be cursed. 
But as for them whose heart walketh after the heart of the detestable thing, and their abominations, I will recompense their way upon their heads, say the you know, because they're the Jews, they're going to get double, if not worse. There's a chapter, I forget, it's Leviticus and Deuteronomy. He says, I will punish you seven times more. And then he goes on, and I'll punish you, I think it's seven times more. And he reads, I'll, think I'll punish you seven more times. Why? Because they had the word of God for their time. They knew exactly what God suspected from. It was written out in Leviticus. It was written out in Numbers. It was written out in Deuteronomy. By the time they're in the land, they have the book. Moses has died. The five books are available to them to know what God expects from them to do. You know, Christian, you are going to suffer first. We get the first judgment at the rapture. The judgment seat of Christ is the first judgment. And listen, we have the Bible. We know what God expects from us. We've got the 66 books. We are told to study, to rightly divide, and we will stand before God without excuse. And if you lose a crown, if you lose a reward, it is because you have not done what the Bible has told you to do. You are saved, and you ought to know. You're without excuse when you're saved. You think God's going to save you and not give you his word? Then we go back. All this judgment, all this, these false prophets, false people. Then did the cherubims lift up their wings and their wheels beside them. And the glory of the God of Israel was over them above. We go right back to the cherubims. And the glory of the Lord went up from the midst of the city, Jerusalem, and stood upon the mountain, Mount Olives. The glory of the Lord I have is Jesus Christ, Matthew 23, 37 through 39 and 24, 3. Upon the mountain, which is on the east side of the city. That's Mount, Mount Olives. That's where the Lord Jesus Christ went. That's where the Lord Jesus Christ would go to pray. So if you want to study in the Bible, study Mount Olive. And I work in a grocery store, and one of my aisles used to be would, would be the pickle. Imagine having a pickle product called Mount Olive for the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, uh, Mount Olives? An olive is not a pickle, because a pickle is a cucumber. And the cucumbers was something that the Israelites wanted back in what country? Egypt. See, you got to know your Bible. you got to study your Bible. You look at something and you say, wow, this is totally wrong. It's like a grocery store, too. And I, look, I look at the, the Morton salt container. Well, there's a little girl holding a holding an umbrella in a rainstorm on salt. Oh, I wonder where that is from. Remember Lot's wife. It would be funny for a Jewish person. I don't know. Check. I, I'm going to have to check that. See if that salt is culture. Imagine a, a Jewish woman having in her cupboard Morton salt. And, well, if they did, they would say it on it. Because I know they have a little emblem. There's three emblems. I now look on things. I'll have to check that out. Imagine, have, imagine a Jewish person, if they could have Morton salt in their cupboard, open it up, and Jesus said, Remember Lot's wife. Now, how I got off on that money trail, I don't know. Oh, Mount of Olives. So here's a product that represents Egypt. You know what olive oil is, don't you? It's a type of the Holy Spirit. You do know that uh, the Garden of Gethsemane, you do know that means wine press. And you do know what Jesus' sweat was like, don't you? See, everything has a meaning. And Calvary was the place of the, you know, Halloween. No, you're wrong. That's how they used a symbol for Satan's birthday where Jesus Christ died and suffered. The glory of the Lord went up from the midst of the city and stood upon the mountain, which is on the east side of the city. And afterward, the Spirit took me up and brought me in a vision by the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, into Chaldea, into them of the captivity. So he's brought back to Babylon. Reminds you of Paul? 
Paul says, I went up to the third heaven. And, and from the, you know, the rest of the time, he tried to have his, his life killed. Paul, get back down. No, yes, get back down. Ezekiel has went over all the way to Jerusalem, and now he's brought back to Babylon. Ezekiel, in this time and age, is the only prophet of the Bible that sees the temple before it's destroyed. Now, you say Jeremiah. Jeremiah saw the temple get destroyed. That's not, is that a kind of vision? I mean, would you like to come home and to see your house burning? On fire, the fire department coming and putting it out? Or would you like to say, you know, you look at your house, maybe you got a U-Haul, you're moving away, and you just look at the house and say, you know, got a lot of memories in that place. Let's move. Let's move on. Get in the car. Let's move. Or would you like to say, yeah, that's my house and there's the flames. Which memory would you like to have? Maybe five, ten years later. Like that, oh, yeah, I remember that, yeah. That, yep, it was. Broken shutter, never did fix that. Grass, never, you know, I always had to plug in the mow the lawn, but, you know, we're going. Or, yeah, all the pictures were gone. All the paperwork, was, and it took us forever to get everything that we need. But which memory would you like to have? Jeremiah got to see the place burning. Ezekiel goes back, and there it is in its glory. And then when you come back to Ezra and Nehemiah, man, they are crying. People rejoice in the temple is built. Yay! And there are people crying because, you know, we saw what the place looked like before it was destroyed. And now we come back and we see it's not here. It's rubble. So the vision that I had seen went up from me. And I spank unto them of the captivity. He turns around and goes to the Jews in Babylonia. And tells them everything that God has told them to tell. And shows them everything that he was shown. All the things. All the things. Not just fluffy little messages. Not just God is love. God is love. Oh, well, all the oh, what about all the stuff that God is love? What about God is love? Like a broken record. God is love. A record, a little black disc that you used to play in our time. And once in a while, when you play the record, it would get stuck and you say, "Thank God is love." God is love. You have to give it a thing. Some of you may not know what records are anymore. I spake unto them of the captivity, the Jews that were in Babylon, all the things that the Lord had showed me. So Ezekiel is a favorite prophet. He tells and says everything that God has told him to say. He doesn't add. He doesn't subtract. Now, that's not inspiration. I don't know what is. You know, men wrote the Bible. All the things. He didn't add. He didn't subtract. Yes, Ezekiel wrote all the things. Somebody comes up to you, well, men wrote the Bible, all the things, out of the mouth of the Holy Spirit. 